it was given as five CDs. So the total cost of raw material is just the multiplication. This one. Uh -huh. So it is what? 1,200 times 5. And you, you see that I'm not typing the 1,200. You know why? I, I want to use the formula. Because if something has to change immediately, it will run through. Otherwise, you have to go in and then keep. Excel was designed so that we can use this formula work uh, to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so we plan it for the raw material, then the packaging. We'll do the same for the packaging. Okay. Uh huh. We, we are giving the price. So, total cost of packaging, we calculate. That one, we use the formula to do it. Okay. And then electricity, we are giving per 10. So total cost for electricity, we do the same thing, step by step, step by step. There's no need to bring it. But at least it, uh, it will remind me that this is what we started with. I, I can't exceed the thousand. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you have to. Yeah. Whether you sell it or not, you have you produce it's a cost to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's important. Look at the heading. Where is it coming from? I've written salaries and what? Wages. That is where this direct labor cost is coming from. The calculation has not been done over here. It has been done where? Somewhere. And then you have to bring it to this place. You know, when you break it this, uh, in smaller bits, it's easier to manage. Because if I want to uh, calculate the direct labor cost and I bring everything here, it will be become nyama, nyama, nyama. Uh -huh. So I just create another uh, sheet for salaries. I'm looking at production. We have factory workers. We have the supervisor. How many of them? One, one. And you can see that I have January 1, February 1. It's just only one person. The factory workers, how many do I have in year one? Three. And it is three, but in year, in year two, it's what? Four. In year uh, three, it's what? Six. So that's what I have to use to do the calculations. And based upon that, I know their monthly salaries. These are the monthly salaries, and out of that, I'll be able to calculate the total salary for supervisor, the total salary for uh, for the staff. Uh -huh. So they are step by step. In fact, it takes time to do this. It's not very simple that quickly you can do it. <laughs> There's a lot of thinking behind it. Uh -huh. Let's see the SNET, the formula for the SNET. Okay, the formula for the SNET, somebody is saying SNET. I made an assumption. I know that SNET contribution is about uh, it's 18, is it 18.5? Yeah, currently it's 18.5 percent. But you, the company, you don't pay the 18.5 percent. You pay the 13, I think 13 percent or 13.5 percent. 13.5, 13 percent, and then the worker will pay the 5.5 percent. So it is the 13 percent, which is a cost to you. I made an assumption that there might be other benefits that the staff will benefit from. I should have separated this one uh, into two, so that you have the SNET and then you have the other one. But I combined it that it will be about 20% of their salary. So this calculation is based upon their salary. Uh -huh. The salary is what? This and this. So I have to add the salaries, you see, and then take 20%. You see? I added the two salaries and then I took 20%. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I have to do the same thing for the admin staff. They have to go through similar process because they are different. They will not feature in the uh, uh, direct cost of production. That's why I have to separate them. So I have the total factory wages and benefits to be that. Then I have the administrative staff and that one to within the calculations just like that. 
Okay, so eventually this figure here will go into the production cost. You see, it will go into the production cost. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. we are, I'm trying to follow you, but sometimes when you don't mention the figures, yeah, I get popped. Okay, okay. I'll try. try, try. I'll try. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then the administrative expenses. That's also another one that we have to look at. There were so many things. There are costs that we have to incur. So the administrative expenses, we have telephone, internet, communication. Printing. Uh, printing, good. Every, every month, that one was what? 200. And then water, 250. Repairs and maintenance, 200. Printing. So I have to look at all these costs. So in every month for the first year, these are the costs. For year one, I have to multiply by 12 months to get the year one figures. Okay. Once I've got them, then I can transport them to where they have to go. This is not the end of the story. It was just calculating the administrative expenses. Good. Can we see the formula in year two? In year two? If we are using the increase in uh, the percentage increase. In oh, okay. Year, year two. Year two. Year one, year two. Uh -huh. Aha. You uh -huh. see, that's assumption. That's, yeah. 16. So we will go to assumption. E16. E16. All right. And you see the percentage increase sure. over there. We'll and then you apply it. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. We said that we'll go for a loan. If you look at the investment portion, the loan figure was 59000 okay, yeah. And we need to talk to the bankers. They will give us the terms. But for simplicity, we said the interest rate will be what? 30%. 30%. Good. What's the going rate now? I think it's around that. 30%. It's heavy. It's not easy. Yeah. So 30%. So the annual interest rate is 30%. And uh, monthly interest rate, because you are going to pay the loan on a monthly basis, is 2.5%. And then there was a repayment period of five years. So if it is five years, it will be 60 months. But there is a moratorium. It's giving a free space, uh, some space, not to pay. The first six months. So the moratorium is six months. But I don't think any bank will say that if the moratorium is six months, you won't pay interest. There's an interest portion. At times, they accumulate the interest for you and then add it to the loan when you start paying. And then they spread it and you pay. In some situations, you pay the interest first. Every six months, I mean, during the first six months, you pay the interest, not the principal. So it depends on the arrangements that you have. But for this one, it is assumed that you are not paying the interest, you are not paying the principal. So whatever is accumulated, you have to add it to the principal. So this figure over here is the interest during the first six months. Which figure? This, uh, okay, good, you are right. I think you said it. It's 8,850. Is the interest that is accumulated within the six months. six months. And we have to do this all calculations. And then we start paying. And this is the repayment schedule. So the first year we start from July, end of December. We have to know. Once we do all these calculations, then you have to know that where will these figures go? Okay. So once we are able to get all these payments, we did it up to year five. Okay, they are all there. So interest. This is the interest portion, okay? All these are interest payments, and they will go into your income statement. It is a cost, so it will go there. Good. And then the principal, where will it go? The, okay. When we come to the cash flow, you know, we are using money to pay. And if we are using money to pay, we will pay the interest, and then we will pay what? The principal. So since it is cash which is going, both the interest and the principal will also feature in the cash flow. You get it? Because cash will go. Cost, yeah. so, uh -huh. No, that's not the cost. We are talking of the cash component. That's going yeah. out. Uh -huh, it's going out, so it has to go there. Then the other aspect is that at the end of each year, eh, at the end of, end of each year, part of the principal will remain. We haven't finished paying because it is five years. At the end of each year, part of the principal will remain. Where would that one go? 
It is a liability. a liability. So where would it go? On your balance sheet. It will go to your balance sheet as a long-term liability. So for this calculation, this figure over there, where we have ending balance, ending balance, uh, this figure, which is 63,972, is the ending balance. It is the balance of the principal, which we have not paid at the end of year one. So that 63,972 will go to the balance sheet as our liability. So all these figures which are ending balance, the next one is here, 54,259, it will go. That's how it is. And you realize that at the end of the fifth year, what will go? Zero. It should be finished. Provided you follow everything, mm -hmm. it should be finished. And that's how they determine the, uh, 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 sorry, the, how they determine this uh, uh, working, uh, sorry, uh, your loan uh, uh, repayment schedule. In some cases, they use a uh, straight line, like this man. He has been using straight line to calculate his interest. So he's taking more. Quickly, let's look at then the final stages of what we are doing. So our proof for our profit and loss statement. We have our revenue. If you remember, our revenue was 15,000 per month. The direct production cost will come to this side. We have our total cost of goods sold, which is here the direct one. We will know our gross profit, which is 6,300, just by subtracting. When you put the case out there, you see where it's coming from. Okay. And then the gross margin, which is the percentage, is the next one which follows. This one which is 42%, quickly, it is our gross profit divided by the uh, revenue. So this is how you do all this, and then you go to the next one, our general expenses. Okay, so what did we get over here? 42%. Percent. Good, good. Okay, now we look at our other expenses. General expenses, we have the marketing expenses, which is 750. It is coming from production cost. If you look at where it is coming from, up there, you will see it over here. In my, I have a sheet called production cost, so it will come from there. Then the depreciation expense, which is 1,150, will come from the depreciation, asset depreciation schedule. So this is how it's being done. Then the salaries of admin staff will also come from salaries, uh -huh. salaries and wages. And then, that is it. After that, you add all. Okay. And then you get this one. Okay. No. I had that. No. Oh, okay. That Sorry. That, that will come down. Uh -huh. This one. Yeah. Good. And now what is it? Let's look at something. Uh, it's coming from the sum of all these costs. Good. And we got, what did we get? Uh, 5,000. 930. Look at this cost well and comment on this 5,930. And then this one, uh, 8,700. Hmm? What do you see? What do you see? Okay. What is the operating profit from this calculation? The operating profit for month one, January is what? 370. So what is happening? What's happening to this business? Look at the cost structure well. Uh-huh. So the non-core staff are taking more. We had a gross margin of 42%. Now we are having uh, operating profit. As what? 2%. So we need to be very careful. Those that we are employing, maybe we are employing too much for that small company. Those are the administration. Maybe we might not need uh, uh, an accounting officer or maybe an admin assistant. We may have to find ways because we are just starting. So these are some of the things that we need to look to. So we go through all and then eventually you come with financial expenses, interest charges on the loans.
it will come in. And where would it feature? You see that we have these figures over here. Good. We will start paying in July. So that's where the interest on the working capital will come from. And then when we start paying, the, uh, uh, yeah, that's the interest on, interest on the long-term loan. It will start from July. So that's where we have it. So we have to do this very, very systematically before we can get these figures. But uh, some of us, it will take time before we can do it. But the idea is that let's get the understanding how these figures come. Where do they come from? So that we can question things. Okay. And then we can do the same thing for the cash flow, which is also another sheet. Okay. Hmm. I told you that there are two forms of preparing the cash flows. We have one method where we use the direct one. We look at all the revenues we got, and then we look at the disbursements. There's another way where we start from the profit before interest and tax, and then we build upon the cash flows. And this is how it, were, it was done for this simple case. This is a simple case. Okay. Uh -huh. Once you are able to do it, we will do it for operations, operating activities. We have a net cash flow of 53104 just the first month. We will do it, and then we will do it for investing activities. You know, all the equipment that we bought, they are there. Okay. And then we have to do it for the financing, where we got the money. We we'll do it over there. At the end of the day, we are going to get net cash or net change in cash. All the changes that took place with cash, we have to put them together. So for the first month, we had 5310. That was the net change in cash from all the activities that we did. But before that, this figure over here is the work, which is 53,920. It's the working capital that we said we would need before we start the business. That's why we have the figure there. But when we go through the cash flows, you might realize that do you really needed that figure that much, which we will think through it. But what we need is that we need to know the net change in cash for every month, and this one is 5,310. This was negative. But we had the working capital, which we started with, which is 5,000, which is here. So when we want to find our cash at the end of the period, this one is at the end of the period, so the first month will be just 5,310 negative plus this one, and you get 48,610. So we are having huge excess cash from the working capital. It is huge, and we might not need it. So we have to look at the working capital again. You see, we might not need it. And we can go through it, all of them, and then you see that at the end of year one, what was the balance? Negative 13,900. That means we need cash. <laughs> but you realize that this working capital that we started with, all oh year we were using it, but I don't think we needed that much every month. We could have reduced it in a way. Okay, otherwise you spend it on useless things. But at the end of year one, we have this. At the end of year two, we have uh, negative 1332. Good. So here we still need cash. Here we still need cash. But at the end of year three, I think we are getting somewhere. Our cash is now positive, 5,109. But ha something has to be done to finance the operations in year one and in year two. But we need to manage it because the working capital that we quoted was too much at the beginning. And we need to find a way of reducing it. So that it, once you take the money, it's a cost. Yeah. So if, let's say, you take it this month, instead of taking it the next four months, you can see the savings that you can make. 
Uh -huh. Okay. And then finally, we had the balance sheet. Good. We start with the current assets. Our cash. This cash. You know where it's coming from? Where would it come from? Cash will come from the cash flow. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. 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 And then we have uh, accounts, accounts receivable. receivable. Well, this calculation is complex. A little bit complex. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. This one, <laughs> we need to do some coaching. It's complex. Coming up with the uh, accounts receivable and also the inventory stock and also even deferred interest payment. Those are a little bit complex. So you shouldn't worry about the balance sheet for now. I think what is critical to you is the cash flow and also the P uh, P uh, P and l Okay. But the balance sheet, you have to give it out for it to be prepared for you to understand it. Let them explain it to you. Hey, if you get it, what is the meaning of this? Okay. Okay. So we will do that and then eventually we have our balance sheet. But the fact that your accounts balance does not mean that it's right. There might be something which is wrong. So it's always important that you give it to the right person to do it and then so even to look at it. And the ratios that we, we said we have to do, some of them are also from here uh, that we can do. If it balances, yeah. what is the meaning? I may not know how to calculate, but when my accountant has brought it and is balancing, okay. what does it mean in to the, me? In if the, it doesn't, what does it mean to me? In the first place, if it balances, then it's telling you that uh, all the assets mm -hmm. of that business that you have, at that particular moment, mm -hmm. you have accounted for in terms of who provided the funding for. So if it is liabilities, you have them. If it is equity, you have them. If it is retained earnings, I hope we know retained earnings. It's like when you make profit, profits. and then you put it in the business. We call it retained. You have retained your earnings in the business. Some people will take it and chop. Other, some also will take it and say, okay, let's give 20% to the shareholders at dividends. dividends. The remaining will come into the business. Aha, good. Mr. Mr. Good, you are, you've done well. You are plowing back your profit into the business in order to do what? To grow it. And if it doesn't balance? If it doesn't balance, then something is wrong. Example. Example, let's say you have not accounted for all the assets. Or you have not accounted for all the liabilities. Uh -huh. Then you have to go back and check. Or maybe there was some mistake somewhere there. Okay. And that's why if we don't keep all the records of the business, the receipts, and we, at times, you know, we the uh, entrepreneurs, the small uh, entrepreneurs, the money is in your pocket. Yes. And at times, oh, we need this bottle. No, 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 no. Then you give it out. You go and buy. You don't even account for it, but you bought it. You don't even write it down. It's common. But if you want to grow, it has to change. Like the trotro meat. <laughs> <laughs>
And for those of you who haven't started yet, are you going to start or are you going to shelve the idea? We're going to talk about expansion and exits. We'll first look at the importance of growth and exits. We'll look at the business expansion and then the business exit. Why do we need to grow? Business focus changes as it moves beyond the startup phase. You identify growth opportunities. Identifying growth opportunities becomes a priority in order to ensure the enterprise sustainability. And remember, I said that if you are starting a business, that is not going to outlive you. Don't start. The idea of entrepreneurship is not that you have business and when you die, the business dies. It should be sustainable. Of course, it's not everybody that will be able to sustain it. But you should have a vision of sustaining the business. Otherwise, you will do things anyhow. Probably just then it becomes our type of farming that we do. Peasant, isn't it? We grow, we eat, and that is it. Growth can be measured by evaluating certain metrics. Today you've learned a bit of things. Sales. Sales is also known as what? Turnover. When we say that the sales we have made in a period, the revenues we have made, we refer to it as your turnover. You can also measure it by your market share. That is if you can measure it. And then your profits. Well, sales and turnover are the same. Staff numbers. Okay, are you growing? Are you taking more people? But a combination of sales and profits is a preferred option. Why? Why is a combination of sales and profits the preferred way of measuring growth? Sustainability. Sustainability. So if you are growing the sales and you are making losses, <coughs> you're not sustainable. Technically, you are not growing, okay? You can't do that for long. So why do we need to look at growth? We survive, we increase the profits, we improve capacity utilization, or we preserve market share. So if you're going to be growing, you also look to look at, ah, this is a very important one. Increased prestige. Now, for those of you who will be employing managers to manage your affairs for you, you have to be very careful. Because your managers may grow the business, not because of survival, not because of profit, but because of what? Prestige. I am managing a 25 branch bank. Are they making profit? Okay. Oh, we are doing very well. We have moved from Ghana, now we are in Liberia. We are going to Sierra Leone. Increase prestige. And for some entrepreneurs, if you follow them, that is how, because they, they don't eat from that business. So you tell you that, oh, I've, doing, I've, done, I've, I've moved this, I've moved this. Oh, you know, he's making losses. But every time, it's the money from his real estate is going into the business. But he wants the prestige for people to know that, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. You make business more attractive for sale. And for those of you who are, today I was talking to Baba about somebody who is an ideas generator. He, she can't do the same thing for two, three years. Generates it, grows it, Sells. Mm. Now, what it tells you is that you have to grow it to make it what? Attractive. So you can <coughs> sell it. Now, planning how to, you will exit your business is just as important as how you started. And believe you me, exit has many faces, and we'll talk about some of them. 
So at the time that you are starting thinking of the startup, you should also be thinking about the exits. Now, like I said, we'll talk about what we mean by exits. The objective is to maximize the value of your company before converting to cash and minimize the amount of time consumed. Whether you are planning it as an expansion or you are planning it as an ex exit, you need to maximize the value of the company. So that if tomorrow, like, what's the lady? Yes. If somebody wants to put money in the company, we would have put it in a position that there is value. It's not that the person will come when there's nothing. After all the toil that you have put in. Getting out of business is a process. And the more complex the business, the longer the process. For some people, they are fortunate. Today, somebody comes, oh, I want to buy your business. I want to offer you 200000 you know your value is 120. Your face is 200,000. But it's rare. Sometimes the hustle you go through, even to exit, is worse than when you are starting. When and how you plan to exit can make a big difference in how you manage your new company throughout. If, is it your retirement package? Or do you intend to scale it up? or to move somewhere altogether. It should be part of you as you start. And we're saying that when and how you plan to make a big difference in how you manage your new company throughout its life. Have an exit strategy from the start. You've said that already. So, what are we talking about? Business expansion. Before we go to the exit. In business expansion, we will be talking about about four main things. We have <coughs> addressing or sometimes we call it penetration. <coughs> We will have an integration and then we will have the defense. So you started a business <coughs> and please, expansion doesn't mean that you have gone one year, two years. It could be the same day that you started today. Tomorrow, whatever decision you are making is expanding the business or exiting. And we say that if you are expanding, you will be looking at three main, and you will have to do the analysis that we have done so that you can choose which strategy you're going to be adapting. We have gone through this, haven't we? Your company's products and services, your strengths and weaknesses as a business owner, availability of cash, credit, and other resources. There always has to be a next thing, says Kuzliski, clinical professor of management at Vanderbilt. But what are the business group success factors? One, your own attitude. If you don't go to work at 7 a.m., what time will your workers come? 11. So your attitude towards your own work, your own job, will determine whether you want to grow it or you want it to sit as it is. Sufficient power planning. Growth doesn't come by chance. Growth that comes by chance is not sustainable. It has to be well thought out, well planned, 
So sufficient trial planning, and that, as I told you yesterday, that is your job. If you are the chief executive of your company, that is your job. You can't delegate it. You can let people help you, but you can't delegate it. You have to take that decision. Appropriate information flow, employee flexibility, adequate capitalization. And when we say capitalization, we are not just talking about the money. Okay, everything that goes into the business. Implications of group. One, control the organization. When it is startup, it's very easy, isn't it? Yesterday when we were talking about control, it was very easy. For those that have moved ahead of you, can tell you. So can you imagine ma managing a 25 branch bank with 470 people, with 500 million in assets? That also means what is your leadership style? What kind of leader are you? We talked a bit about management by wandering around. Now, when we say leadership, please, it's total business. Leadership for your employees, leadership for your customers, leadership in your suppliers, total. You can't take back seats. Then, coordination. You have a branch in Tamale, in Wa, in Kumasi, in Accra. Everything is in Kumasi now, isn't it? So, we put a branch in Accra. And even in Accra, one in Sidu, one in Medina. One in Spintex. So, how do you coordinate that? How do you make sure that you are not overstocking or understocking? How do you make sure that you don't have se several items in one shop and in another shop there is a shortage? Who checks that? And for those who have perishable things, that one shop, it doesn't move. So it stays there, gets rotten. Another shop, it moves quickly. It's very easy when it is two, three branches, isn't it? But assuming you have one in every region. I can use the software to do that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage information? Because you get a lot of information. Right? Everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody wants you to see this case. All kinds of reports. Even today alone, look at what you just went through. The income statements, the cash flow, and the balance sheet. And I heard it so much. And if you have a sophisticated organization, you'll be getting this not only for that organization, but for every branch and probably for every agency. How do you manage that information? Personal requirements. <coughs> Group, human resources. I mean, talked a bit about human resources yesterday. Your recruitment policy. Who recruits, where, how? Financing. As you grow, <coughs> more money. You may also have to consider the following. Staffing, we talked about it. Training. One mistake of your staff you can lose a lot of customers. We had a very bad experience at Sakumono where one of our front officers, in fact, she was a national service person. That they are just she's finished her national service and they were planning to take her on so they gave her a contract. And she was rude to a customer. Mm. And what she didn't realize is that, that customer was an opinion leader in that catchment area. But for the fact that we are the staff who stayed in that, within that estate, we would have lost every single customer there. Because he went to their meeting and then gave it to us. Ah. And, you know, the thing about the people saying things, that it becomes exaggerated as it goes on. Unfortunately for us, we had a, a 
somebody who stayed there who and quickly we had to do damage control. But when we investigated, we realized that that girl had never been to any of that training. So we changed our policy then, because our policy then was that we actually didn't spend money on training national service people. Now from there on, anybody who joined us, whether you are casual, whether you are national service, you have to go through certain training. It wasn't perfect, but you had to spend money on it. I'm saying that as you grow, training becomes key. Now you have to balance that with your operating expense. And for us, the philosophy was that training was not an operating expense. <coughs> Although we put it there in the financial statement as yeah. operating expense, it was actually an investment. And when you treat it as an investment, you begin to measure return on investment. So we had a way of measuring return on investment from training. It's not easy, but at least it was a way. What about premises? Premises. Now you're doing it from your house. As you grow, say you're operating from the house now. As you grow, you can't stay for there. And what are the implications when you begin to go and rent a place? And sometimes it's not even just the rental of the place, electricity even to the place, the amenities. You had a customer who had to go and buy a whole uh, transformer mm -hmm. because they had to relocate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. ECG said that they were, they were not ready to go to that area. Mm -hmm. That is where he said warehouses. And you have to go and buy a transformer. As you grow, how can you when you use technology? And he mentioned it. Use online. These days, fortunately, people have CCTV all over. So if you're not going to get there, can you ride on technology? And it also has implication. The software you are using, you have to replicate it. If it's a one place software, and now you begin to put in another branches, that is where Francisca is not here. That is where then you begin to have a problem. Because you bought a single user, now you have to spread it to 10 users. And you have to pay licenses fee. Customer service and system, <coughs> that takes me back to my example. If you don't have the systems in place and you haven't developed procedures and training manuals, you have to start all over. Anytime you employ somebody, there should be a system that takes the person through your system. Otherwise, you will have Kumasi branch doing extremely well in terms of customer services. Habeka branch, extremely poor and there is no standardization in the organization. And then, in some cases, outsourcing. It comes with its own problems. So, are you going to hire watchmen, or you are going to outsource the security? If you outsource the security, are they and one of the things in the service industry you realize is that the security men are the first point of call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So although we're outsourcing and taking security men from another company, we're training them <coughs> at our own cost. Okay. Mm. Because the company you are taking is not prepared to do it. It's not part yeah. it's supposed to be watching. But he's standing at the car park. Mm -hmm. And anybody who passes the car must have a 20 for this bank. Already you have a problem with your car park. Yeah. So those who came to... Oh, look, any branch of ours that didn't have a problem with car park was not a profit-making car branch. Mm. Mm. Wow. That is where you have to balance it. Okay, we are not talking about TTB, but you, your choice of branch is also critical. Why are you expanding? What are you doing? You realize that anywhere we wanted deposits, we wanted business. Car park, parking was a Ashtown, Medina, parking was a Sprinters we didn't have a parking problem, but that Sprinters Road branch was not profitable. It was put there for service. It is it because the place is crowded? Or in Ghana, commercial so activity. Many customers coming in. In Ghana, commercial <coughs> activity is always in the crowded area. All right, sorry. When we moved to Kaswa, we didn't have a big 
problem. Mm. Then the place started expanding. expanding. And it's amazing. And we didn't have a car park. Sorry. Park six cars and there's nowhere to park. Mm. <clears throat> we went to Kansas by accident, but we ended up making it very profitable. You will need to assess your business's current performance capability in order to answer these questions. And so it goes back to the things we have done in the past four days. If you don't know your competencies, if you don't know your strengths and weaknesses, if you don't know your opportunities and threats, how are you going to assess your own capabilities? So now, let's talk about the methods of, and I said that there are many, aggressive or sometimes core penetration, integration, and defensive. You are introducing a new product. You take your existing product to a new market. You license your products. You start a chain. The young guys who are doing the food. How do they call those people? Check, check. Yes. Mm -hmm. Today they are making chains. Have you realized that? Yes, yes, yes. You can turn your business into a franchise. So you give me the right franchise and I go to uh, Gambia. And I your brand and your everything. Procedures. procedures. If you haven't thought of it, if you haven't intentionally planned and tomorrow somebody comes and says, I want your franchise in Gambia, what do you do? And sometimes it could be that what you are doing here, you probably would do better if you took somebody else's franchise. Mm -hmm. Have you thought of it? Yes. <laughs> Is that the main model that they are using to boost their production capacity? Are they franchising the equipment to produce? The sachet, sachet. <laughs> That's a big question. No. As far as I know, they are all centralized. I think it's only ever pure that is in a crying mass. Okay, I hear Baltic is also expanding too. Yeah, I, I think the the I think uh, the the franchise model in this part of the world hasn't been well uh, exploited. Mm. But the one area that is uh, uh, picking up is the water water area. Uh, so uh, uh, a company like Vaultic has actually capitalized on the franchise. Yeah. And some of the, for example, Vaultic main core does not produce this one. Yeah. This is franchised. The, the one in the uh, Sashid, the small one, yeah. Which is called uh, high school. High school. High school. High school. High school. It's a franchise. Right. So when you see the way they package it, the the big package mm -hmm. is where they've written the Baltic. Right. But when you start picking Such one, one, yes, it is high school. So they are the only ones. So and what they've done is that in Kumasi, there's there's a plant, but that plant is not owned by Baltic. Right. Okay. In I think Tamale, there's a plant. That plant is not owned by uh, Baltic, so that is how they are there doing their lesson. Let me tell you how Baltic came with that. There was somebody in National Mine Estates who was actually producing Baltic. Like bagging Baltic. Yeah, they had him arrested. Yeah. Yes. And so it was after that incident. So he came as an accident. And that's one of the things, again, if we have time, we'll talk about. Strategy is not always crafted. It's not always that when you think you. Sometimes the it hits you. It comes as a result of but but you always have to pick it and analyze it and see the implications. So after that incident, then they realize that okay, why don't you franchise franchise it? And my guy was doing it in his house. And he had the trucks that were distributing. Then there is also joint forces. Yeah, and yesterday I, I, I actually made an example between the, um, the, the Alata Seminar and then the Share Butter. Easily joint forces. Again, Moringa powder, Moringa oil. 
really, if somebody can, so we are, but you could join forces. And then go global. Internationalization. Websites. Right. It's not just the website. Internationalization, now with technology, but it go, it's a bigger thing than just, um, just putting there. If, if you package to Gambia, to Sierra Leone, you are doing internationalization. But you can start by selling. So in your case, you can actually put it on the net and sell internationally. It's one wing of it, but it's a big picture. It's a bigger thing. I guess it still depends on what you are doing. Oh, sure, obviously. Every, for each one of you, it depends on where you are, what you are doing, and where you want to go. Um, <clears throat> for some businesses, I'm not, I'm not too sure which one. You, you, you probably can't go beyond your borders. If your business is cultural oriented, you go out there, nobody. It, it's like, this is my friend. And then you go to the Arab countries and you say you are doing pork. They won't give you land. 